Hey everyone, I'm Hashem, thanks for tuning in. I recently got invited to participate in a print swap or exchange by Gregory from uh, over on the Naked Photographer YouTube channel. And I thought I'd use the chance to show you my current workflow for printing a film scan on an inkjet printer. And in this case, it was a frame of Fuji Pro 400H, rest in peace, taken in the Pentax 6.7 here in Victoria, printed on luster paper in my Epson printer. So if you're not familiar with Gregory's channel, I've mentioned him before in my Ferrania P30 review. He's very knowledgeable, has a great channel, so definitely check him out and also check out all the other channels I've listed in the description who are the other participants in this sort of collaboration and print exchange, which I'm honored to be a part of. With the exchange, we were randomly nominated another person to send a print to and to receive a print from. And I was nominated to send a print to Nico, who you might be familiar from Nico's photography show. I've mentioned him also on my channel before as one of the channels I really enjoy watching, especially the news that he does every week. And the frame I chose to print for him was this one here. So I chose this particular photo to make the print for Nico. Uh, I can't really put my finger on why. I just thought this might be a photo that he might like being all the way on the other side of the world in Spain. I thought I'd send him a little piece of Australia, this being a bit of the Victorian coastline. From what I've seen from Spain, maybe there's a bit of similar landscape there, but I know he's moving to Finland, so I thought this would just be a, a cool frame uh, to send him. And yeah, I decided to print it on 8x10 on an A4 piece of paper. And for the film scan, it was actually a high-res scan made by Halide Supply, based here in Melbourne. And because I was only printing 8x10 and had a high-res scan, there was no need to rescan this frame which is something I would do, for example, if I was printing bigger or if the scan was low res, I would go ahead and rescan on my DSLR in a process that you can watch in this video in this card here. But in this case, I had more than enough resolution, which is I would recommend to have at least 300 pixels for every inch that you're printing, and I had more than that. So for my print workflow, I use Lightroom, which is what I also edit in. So I usually create a virtual or proof copy for the version I'm going to print. That way I can activate soft proofing within Lightroom to give me a preview of the paper and ink that I'm going to be printing on. It's all matched to the printer I'm using. And that way I make any edits I'd like to that soft proof to try and get it to how I'd like it to look on paper. So once you activate soft proofing, always make sure you try and compensate for the lack of contrast and brightness that you're probably going to get when you print. On paper, things are going to look a little bit darker, often less contrast, depending on the paper you're using, how glossy it is. Some papers will also present a color shift, also depending if they're warm or cool. So there's quite a lot to it, but I'm only gonna run briefly over my workflow of how I spit out a print in this video. So after I make my adjustments, I head over into the print module in Lightroom, and then you wanna make sure you check some settings, like the paper size. In this case, I was using A4 paper, and it's Harman 260 GSM RC resin coated luster paper. The print area on the paper was actually eight by 10 inches, which I chose because it matches closely to the original ratio being shot on the Pentax 6.7. So when I crop, I crop to that four by five ratio. For printing on my particular printer, I use 360 PPI at the bottom of the print settings in Lightroom, because as far as I've researched, that's the maximum that the Epson XP 15,000 I have can go. I use the relative setting as opposed to perceptual. This can often depend on the print I'm making though. I select the printing profile I used, and interestingly in this case, I could never find the, a paper profile matched to the printer for this particular Harman paper, so I used the Hannah Muller Photo Pearl paper, which is another paper I have, but it closely matches enough for me to get a comparable result to what I see on screen. Speaking of screens, obviously it is important to have a calibrated monitor. I use a BenQ SW 2700PT, I think it is, it's a monitor I've mentioned before in a previous video, something I was uh, really saving and waiting to get because it does make a big difference in how well you can calibrate your monitor. But this is something really important that I could talk more about in, that, in a future video where I might dive deeper into my printing workflow. So then I go into the advanced sort of printer setup and with the Epson that I have in particular, it's important to both select an equivalent paper because Epson only lets you choose their paper. So I choose the closest thing when I choose paper type being Epson Premium Semi-Gloss. And then also with any printer, it's important to make sure you disable any of the printer's own color management. You wanna let Lightroom do all the color management. So in this particular case, I go into advanced setting and I turn off ICM, make sure it's ticked to the no color adjustment setting. So then that's it. I go ahead and print, a preview will pop up. This often looks nothing like it's meant to. I don't know why with the Epson software this happens, but I go ahead and print it and it will generally come out looking pretty close to what I see on the screen. So after letting it dry, that's a good opportunity to compare it to what you see on the screen. Now when doing this, 
uh, you probably want to do it under nice and even light, preferably some kind of uh, daylight balance light. This can be tricky because obviously the light you view the print in uh, is going to make a difference, especially when you're trying to compare it to a backlit screen. That's again something I could talk more about later, but in my eyes, I looked at the print, it looks pretty much like what I was seeing on the screen. It does look like the way I wanted it to, and that's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna just finalize and pack this and send it off to Nico over in Europe. So being a part of this print exchange is heaps of fun. And what I really want to relay on to you guys is that it can be fun for you to try this. It could be an encouragement for you to print a photo and to swap it with someone else, whether it's someone local or to send it overseas. It's a great way to connect with other photographers, to share your work, to see it in physical format. So I definitely encourage you to give it a try yourself. So I'll be making another video down the track in maybe a month or so where I'll be receiving the print from the person who was nominated to send one to me. So stay tuned for that. And like I said, this is just a quick overview of how I print on inkjet i've had a few questions about it but i definitely encourage you to ask me any other questions you have about how i print down in the comments and i can also use those for any uh, plans i have to make another video down the track where i go a little bit more in depth into how i print from a scan now mind you i'm still learning and also the printer i have isn't the highest grade printer it doesn't have pigment inks or anything special like that it's kind of a medium range uh, printer but i still really enjoy the results if you missed it before, the model is the Epson XP15000. I'll link it in the description, as well as the monitor I mentioned and the calibrator I use and any other relevant information. Most importantly, definitely check out the other people collaborating in this print exchange. Some great channels out there, including Nico's and a bunch of others that I watch quite regularly. So check them out. Let me know any of your tips that you might have for me on my print workflow, how it could improve. I want to thank Gregory again for inviting me to be part of this print collaboration and exchange. Thanks for watching another episode of Pushing Film. And before I end things, you may have noticed that the current space I'm in is different. It's a little bit of a mess right now. And the reason for that is because I've been recently moving my office over to a new space. So it's a bit of a mess. I'm a bit of a mess. Everything still is finding its place. So if you were curious about that, I mentioned it in my last live stream, but this is the reason why the content on the channel has dropped a little bit, but I'm definitely looking forward to bringing more and to finalizing this studio space, which I'm quite excited about. So thanks again, and I'll see you on the next episode of Pushing Film.